questions from last time? Uh, so we're finished talking about uh, just rotational kinematics, and now we're going to go on to kinetics. We're trying to get to one big equation. What's that? What's the equation that we're heading towards? I didn't say this or anything, but... <laughs> no, not this semester. That's a more advanced class. Um, so Newton's second law, we already know that. So, so we're trying to get to the rotational version of Newton's second law. Um, so we're on rotational kinetics. And we're heading towards the big result for rotational kinetics. And that's, well, I always call it RN2L, the rotational version of Newton's second law. And that is that add up the moments about A, and those are equal to the moment of inertia about A times the angular acceleration. Um, I dare you, <laughs> I challenge anybody here to try to do, go through all these problems and not memorize. That would be really something. Um, so we're heading towards this. And we've talked about what angular acceleration is, but we haven't talked about these yet. In this, you know, in statics we talked about a moment, but we haven't talked about that yet here, so I'm going to introduce that idea. And uh, then I'm going to tell you what the moment of inertia is. And once we have those two things, then we can use this equation. And uh, this, like, Writing it this way kind of implies that this works for any A, but that's not true. So what are the two possibilities for A? Don't look at your notes. Center of mass, that always works. So if, if you can't remember the other one or you don't, whatever, or you don't even, you just don't want to think about it, you can always do it with A equal to center of mass. Um, but it saves you a good bit of time if you have the option of the second one to use it. And that is when A is fixed to um, an inertial coordinate system. And so couldn't you always, like, well, can't you always use it? Because isn't there always a, a point A that's fixed in an inertial coordinate system? Well, the point has to be fixed in that inertial coordinate system and fixed on the body. Okay, so you can't just choose some point A unrelated to the body. It has to be a material point on the body. Um, so this one is always true. And this one is not always possible. All right, so a uh, moment. Um, everybody's talked about moments um, in statics, but uh, so we call it a moment, but I think it's worth uh, storing it in your brain as the moment of a force about a point. Okay, because the value of this moment depends both on the force and what your about point is. Um, and so, um, pictorially, if this is your rigid body, and actually, uh, you can define a moment whether the thing is a rigid body or not. But, so, this could be pudding. Um, and um, I, I like to say pudding because there was this Simpsons episode where uh, 
Um, Mr. Burns makes Homer his uh, helper monkey, like pays him money to do all these zany things. And, and he pays him to throw a <laughs> cup of pudding at Lenny. And he throws it and Lenny, it hits him in the eye. And he's like, ah, oh, my eye. My doctor told me I shouldn't get pudding in it. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's say this is the about point, and there's some force F applied here. Um, and so we'll call the point where the force is applied, what do you want to call that? What's a good thing? To, hey, P is a good, yeah, let's call it P. Okay, so this is the point P. And that's a vector because it's coordinates. It's a vector going from the origin to that location. And so if it's set up like this, and we're going towards the moment being equal to row cross f, what does the row vector look like? OK, that's right. So that's mathematically what it is. And what does it look like on this? p minus a. So it goes, it's a vector from A to the point P. So if A is the about point, P is the point where the force is applied. then the moment about A produced by this force F is equal to rho cross F. Um, OK, so I think it's helpful uh, to write this out in sort of a table form. Um, and you'll see, like when we start using Newton's second law and rotational Newton's second law together, you'll see that this table works out really nice. Everyone who took statics with me, this is how we talked about it. And so um, this table you set up this way. Uh, P, so first, the first column is where the coordinates, where the force is applied go. Second column is the about point. Third column then is the row vector, and that's just equal to P minus A, so it's easy to calculate. P is coordinates, so that's a location. And then the next one is F, so that's the force vector. And then the last one is the moment, and that's equal to rho cross F. So um, here you put the So this is where the coordinates go. For the point of force application. This is the about point. Again, those are coordinates. And so both of these are in meters or whatever units of length you're using. And that's good because to add or subtract two vector quantities, they have to have the same units. Um, so this row vector, now you just take whatever's here, subtract whatever's here, and you get the row vector. Uh, this is, I don't know, you can think of it as like a moment arm vector kind of. Um, then F is the force vector, and M is the moment about A produced by F.
and um, the mnemonic that I'm currently using for this table, uh, these mnemonics go in and out of fashion in my head uh, semester to semester, but I'm still using the one from last semester. So um, is pancake artists row, get it, Greek letter row, for marzipan, which is um, not only a memory device, but it's also true for a pancake artist who lives on an island and uses marzipan in his pancakes. Maybe, somewhere. It's like uh, when you see like wedding cakes and stuff, they have like big elaborate shapes and things made out of, it looks like it's made out of the frosting. It's that like pliable kind of halfway between candy and a frosting. You can get it at your you know, local bakery and whatnot. Um, okay, so to write out the table, here's the mnemonic device. Pancake artist row for marzipan. Um, okay, so let's do an example. So let's say that this is the shape. Yeah. And let's say that the about point is here. Okay. And below it at a distance of, uh, let's say, two meters, there's a force vector applied. And let's say that's 500 newtons x and negative 100 newtons y. And so if the coordinate system is like this, um, what is the moment about A produced by F? Okay, so I'm gonna write out the table. Pancake, artists, row, for marzipan. Before you can assign coordinates to anything, you need to choose a coordinate system. Uh, so where do we, you know, there are really two sensible places to choose the origin location for this. Uh, one would be at A and one would be at F. Let's put it where F is. Um, so put the origin at P, okay? Um, so then uh, what are the coordinates of the point P? Zero. Yeah, zero, zero, the origin's there. And this is a three-dimensional problem, so for now I'm going to write it out with three coordinates. Um, then what would the about point be? Zero, yep. Zero, two, zero. Now subtract P minus A to get rho, and you get zero, negative two, zero. What's the F vector? Yep, 500, negative 100, zero. And now the moment, um, is going to be zero, zero, uh, yes, 1,000. So this is the moment, and so MA is equal to zero, zero, 1,000. What are the units? Newton meters, yep. And so physically, what does that mean? What's the, what does the vector direction of the moment mean? 
yeah, that's right. So um, the just like the direction of the angular acceleration and angular velocity vector, you can think of that moment as the direction of the moment vector is an axis that that rotations occur about due to this moment. So the moment causes rotations about that axis, according to the right-hand rule. Um, so the moment direction um, is an axis about which a rotation would occur. So one thing you should notice about this is in 2D motion, so let's say 2D motion in the XY plane, um, the moment only has a non-zero Z component. That's always the case, okay? Because if, if the object's moving in the XY plane, um, the only, so, you know, if the XY plane, the XY plane is this, and my hand's moving in that plane, all axes have to be either into the page or out of the, out of the page. Okay, that's the only kind of rotation that can happen. So the moments have a non-zero Z component only. Um, but in 3D motion in general, you know, all of these can be non-zero. Um, we are going to, yeah. So we'll do a little bit of that. Most of the calculations we do are going to be in the plane. And we'll see how you can, you can actually build three-dimensional problems out of sets of two-dimensional motions. So like you're first dealing with a moment in this plane, then you're dealing with a moment in this plane. And so most of our thinking is going to be in the plane, in a plane. Um, anybody have any questions about calculating moments? All right. So the next thing we have to talk about is the moment of inertia. Um, so the way to think about this, again, like for storage in your brain, Think of it as the mass moment of inertia. Um, about an axis. And um, we're always going to represent this as a capital I with a lowercase a. Uh, so the A refers to the axis, just like the A referred to the about point for the moment. Um, anybody in here taken D-form yet? Okay, so you've already seen a moment of inertia that's, that uses the notation I sub A. You still call it the moment of inertia, and it's a totally different thing. Like, it could not be more confusing. It's, they're unrelated to each other. So, what? <laughs> so, um, it's important to keep in mind, so notice that this measures an object's, um, or measures the ease with which an object can be rotated. And it's totally different from the aerial moment of inertia.
that you also represent as capital IA um, in D form that measures a shape's resistance to bending. And so, of course, it's really easy to confuse these two. They come up in classes that you maybe take in adjacent semesters, and they use the same notation. You calculate them in a very similar looking way, but they're different things. So be sure you're clear about that to yourself, like when you do deform. Um, OK, so um, the mass moment of inertia is a measure of resistance to rotational acceleration, angular acceleration. And so like for example, um, like in diving or gymnastics, um, you get more points for doing all your flips like this. You know, than you do for doing all your flips like this. Um, and the reason is that this body position has a higher mass moment of inertia than this one does. And so it takes more to get spinning up to a certain speed. And so if you can't spin as fast, you got to go higher and so on. Um, and so uh, looking at these two shapes, uh, what would you guess is the determinant of whether something has a high or low mass moment of inertia? So. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it has something to do with how, how the uh, shape is distributed from the center of mass. And so what it really is, is um, it depends on how far mass is distributed from the center of mass. So a shape can be really stretched out, but if the stretched out parts don't have much mass, you know, associated with them, you can still have a low moment of inertia. Har far. Har far mall. Depends on how far mass is distributed from the center of mass. Okay, so, um, just based on that definition, you could maybe come up with the integral definition, um, and it would look something like this. So here's the integral definition for the mass moment of inertia. Ia is equal to the integral over the entire mass of our